Hey, this video I'm going to share with you how to prepare 1099s using QuickBooks Online. So in this video, you're going to learn the proper vendor setup, including an important checkbox to do that says track payments for 1099. We're going to learn how to set up the mapping so that each account, like subcontractors, contract labor, however you have it in a system, uh, gets pulled in to produce the report that will be based off of the contractors uh, that you have that you'd like to issue a 1099. And then I'll share with you how to run some custom reports and, and just discover which of your vendors are treated as contractors and verify that you've got everything that you need. First name, last name, company name if applicable, city, state, zip, and either their social security number, um, if they're a LLC and maybe have an EIN um, as well, uh, we would see that as well. So let's let's go ahead and uh, get started. All right, so here we have um, my QuickBooks demo account. I wanna mention this is all just a fake account here. And the first thing that you're going to want to do is it all starts with you need to get before you pay anybody, you need to get the W-9 form from your independent contractors. And there ought to be a name box here that has their first and last name based on their income tax return. If they have a business name, you would see that listed on line two here. And then we're looking for, you know, an independent sole proprietor, individual sole proprietor. Um, would be the scenario where we're going to issue a 1099 to somebody who's not an employee. Okay, we're, if there's an S corp or a C corp, we we don't need to send them a 1099. Okay, we should have a address and a city state zip here, and then down below here we're going to have either a social security number, or you also very well likely could have an employer ID number as well. Even if they're a independent uh, sole proprietor, they may have an LLC, um, but they're um, set up with the state, you know, and there's a federal EIN number. So use that uh, as you have that. And then um, you're going to make sure that we've got a signature and all that. So just complete fake document here just to share with you a demo. Okay. All right. So the first step would be you would need to go to the expenses vendors tab and click the new vendor item here. So let me just type a few things here. I'm gonna pause the recorder and come back in just a second. Here's the information that we need to enter. We need to enter a first and last name. Email is optional, but I highly recommend it. So that way uh, the email can be sent out as you uh, issue the 1099s. We have the address, city, state, zip. Um, I like to add notes sometimes and so I could add a little note here. Um, we can attach the 1099 inside the attachments field. That's a great idea to bring that in. But most importantly here guys, look here, there's track payments for 1099. If you did all this work but you forgot to check that box, the wizard is not going to know anything about that. So you have to verify that you've clicked track payments for 1099. Enter there social security number or their uh, EIN number. And again, that's going to come straight from this information right here. So one of these two numbers, they're nine digits, but it's just a matter of the format. Okay. And so that is the, t the W9. You get that information over and you save it. Okay. Now let's imagine we want to create a, our bill to John Doe. So we're going to click a bill. And we'll pay him online and so forth as well. And so he invoices us invoice 87. And we can come in here and look for the contractor, contract labor account, services for December, and it is uh, 4,500. Okay. I could tag it as a, as just for fun, you know, but this has no relevance tagging. I just like to share, show off a little feature here I'm using. That's fun. All right. I have the um, 4,500. I'm going to just hit save here. 
it's not linked to a class. It's not linked to a um, project or anything like that. But if you wanted to do any of that, you could. Um, and I don't know if you're taking advantage of this new online bill pay, but it's pretty awesome. We could schedule a payment, pay this vendor with a direct deposit or send them a physical check and there would be no printing, anything. QuickBooks would send them a paper check for free. Right now, as of December 2021, it's free. Um, or you could you can use your credit card to pay it as well. So there's a fee for that. So at any rate, imagine you know we went through, we paid it and all that. The, but most importantly, here's contract labor is how it's going to be populated here. Okay. So at this point, I'm in the payroll module and you'll see that you have payroll employees, contractors. Clicking contractors will give you everybody on your list of vendors that has checked the box that we talked about before with the 1099 track payments. So if you notice somebody's not on this list that should be, there's two scenarios. Um, one is you may have had them as an employee, marked them as employee, and that, that will not work. Um, if you have somebody marked as an employee, then they're getting a W-2. For a contractor, they need to have a contract show up here uh, in here. Okay, and so let me just click on John Doe here. This will be another method that you can uh, edit the information here as well. So this would be individual or businesses filing tax using your employer identification number here. So all of that is another way here. I shared with you the way to enter this information going down the uh, vendor path, but what's beneficial here is you can kind of see if things are set up here, click payments, any supporting uh, documents here. It's saying waiting for info here. I'm going to go back and select another test example here, Henry Roxport here. You can see that if you have their email, you can email your contractor to complete their profile. It's kind of good and bad. I'm not a huge fan of that because we won't see if they, if the, we won't see if they're a, an S corp or we just won't see this information here. You don't get to see any of that if you go down this path here. But it is convenient because they can enter their address and their identification number, but just don't get the clarity. So my preference would be to go into the expenses vendors, add a new vendor, and fill out the first and last name and do all that right here and track payments there. And once you track that payment here, so I'm just gonna do test here and save it. And I go over payroll and hit contractors. Here's my test. Okay. What's well, interesting though, if you click add a contractor from here, it will force you uh, to kind of really, really aggressively uh, we'll get an email to them. And if they don't fill out the email, they get another email. And it'll be a lot of emails to this person from Intuit asking them to fill out their contractor information. And you may or may not want that to happen behind the scenes. Okay. All right, um, so now let's get to the mapping. Part two of this exercise is I'm gonna share with you how to go about saying you want 1099. So you can either click the prepare 1099 button from here or on the expenses vendors, you'll have the ability to click prepare 1099s there. All right, so there is a payment that you have to pay as an off cycle payment to your regular uh, QuickBooks online subscription, unless you're part of a payroll module where it comes included like the elite. So it depends on your payroll subscription. But if you don't have a payroll subscription, you just want to send out 1099s, what will happen is QuickBooks will email the 1099s to the IRS on your behalf. They will uh, email the 1099s only if you put the contractor's email and they will definitely print and mail all the 1099s to your contractors. And then you'll get a copy of those as well that you can download as a PDF in your uh, outside of QuickBooks. So you gotta get click, let's get started here. I'm gonna click that. All right, again, this is, this is my fake company here. And um, I cannot get to step two 
without putting in a tax ID. So I'm just going to put in a fake tax ID here. Next, this is going to be important step here as far as uh, what kind of payments you would like to populate here. So common payment types, you'll definitely need to consult with um, a tax attorney for some of these other ones as well if you're not sure about. Get legal counsel. Now I'm not a lawyer. I'm not providing free legal advice. This is just meant as education demo here. I'm going to come in here and find the contractors expenses and you can map one or more accounts. So on your bills and your expenses and your checks, you would have to make sure that you had gone through and selected. So if you possibly wrote a check to an attorney and they're a sole proprietor, then you'd want to have professional fees populate as well, you know, possible. So this will show you everything that is going to be picked up on. If you write 20 checks to contractors, 19 of them are contract labor, and one of those happens to be named differently like subcontractors. Uh, if it's not here, it's not going to show up as a dollar amount that populates it. So this is what we call mapping. All right. And I'm going to either save and finish layer. I'm going to hit next. Okay, so here it has seen in my QuickBooks three vendors that have the checkbox. Red flag on missing information here. Total red flags here. So I could click on these later and edit to populate it. But I am going to um, continue on the list here because I know for sure John Doe will get one here. All right, so I, I'm realizing that I did not um, pay that bill. I just created a bill, so it has not showed up here because it's not not been paid here for the threshold. So um, let me hit save and finish later. Let me go ahead and pay that bill. This is a quick way to get to the most recent bill here. So schedule online payment, I'm just going to pretend it was paid online. Great. Save and close. All right. Let me go ahead and just do a quick check here to even better. Let's say that we paid on a credit card to John Doe 2000 also. And let's say we, you know, we did that a while ago, but on the credit card here. So credit card amounts are going to get excluded from the 1099s. All right, we'll go back to the prepare 1099s, continue. All right, so you can see total payments, 6,500. The 1099 NEC threshold here is 4,500 for when we did the bill pay. I uh, like you write a check, you know, and the ones on the credit card are excluded here. Okay, so I'm just going to, if I were to click finish preparing 1099s, then it's going to take me to the per, uh, pricing and and so forth. So this uh, will open up January 1st and it will close I think January 30th or 31st. Um, and it's important to note that the they, they price increases as you get deeper into January. So if you're prepared, do it as early as you can in January to save and get the early bird cost as well. Take a, Make sure um, that you truly understand that there are no undos. Complete no no uh, mistakes here. There's no there's absolutely nothing you can do once you hit submit. And putting your credit card, it's it's over. There's no way you can go. In order to make a correction, you'd have to amend it outside of QuickBooks Online with the help of somebody to do that. 
All right. So I mentioned lastly, we're going to do some reports. So there's a number of ways to do a report. Um, if we go to reports and scroll down into the what UO, we can see that we have 1099 contractor balance detail, 1099 contractor balance summary. If you're looking at balances here, um, you also have 1099 transaction detail report. I like that one. I like that one a lot. So I'm going to click 1099 transaction detail report. So this gives us um, the threshold that we could do a certain threshold for this year to date, cash basis, and we would be able to see um, everything. And I know that mine's the test count, so I don't have much here, but that's that's uh, very, very helpful there as well uh, that you could do. So that is um, the 1099 transaction detail report that could be saved and customized and so forth as well. So, so all right, so we are about ready to wrap it up here. I know that was a long video here, but I hope that it was helpful to you um, to learn how to properly set up a vendor that has track payments for 1099 use. You've learned how to map the 1099 mapping, and then you learned how to run the 1099 transaction detail report to verify that you've got all your ducks in a row before you finally submit that uh, those forms out there. So thank you for watching. Uh, more information from me is found on my website at sequentialsolutions.com or you can just send me an email at stevechase at sequentialsolutions.com. Um, leave a comment in the description and that's another way that you can get in touch with me as well. So have a great day. Happy 1099ing.